Okay, here we are with the motor from a Technics RS M250. There's a few problems with this deck in that uh, the playback speed sometimes just sort of bloops down and it's disconcerting when you're listening to it because there's no pattern to it whatsoever. It just occasionally just slows down like that. So I want to see if I can solve this problem. On a Pioneer CT7000, I had an issue where the motor wasn't starting all the time. So about 50% of the time it would start and then the rest of the time it wouldn't. You'd have to nudge the flywheel to get it going. So I pulled that motor apart, replaced some capacitors, resoldered everything back together and it seemed to work fine after that. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a similar treatment to this motor and see if it makes any difference. So if we look around on the other side, a little bit hard to see, but there's four little tabs here that have been sort of hammered in and that retains this plate here. When this plate comes out, you can actually see like the PCB and the actual motor unit inside there. This is really just a case for the motor. And once this plate is out, that will push, push out and I'll be able to get access to the motor and then I can disassemble it. So to undo these tabs, I'm going to use a center punch and just see if we can just knock those clear and then I can get that out. And hopefully that'll make a, a, a better job than the way I did it on the Pioneer. The Pioneer just sort of used a screwdriver and, and pliers and they ended up sort of breaking and yeah, it wasn't a, a very neat and tidy job. So hopefully we can do a little bit better than that this time. So that's gonna be what we do today and we'll document what goes on and we'll have a look at what's inside. Now, in terms of knocking these out, uh, that's going to be a bit difficult to sort of film nicely on camera, but just imagine that you've got a centre punch there and I hit it with a hammer, and that's all you're going to be missing out on. So, for the moment, we'll pause this video and I'll do that. Okay, here we are. I've managed to get that loose. So basically, like I said, all I did was use the centre punch for that. Probably something, you know, a little bit flatter would have been better, but I'm a bit limited in what I can uh, find um, in terms of punches and things like that and you know possibly if I needed to do this a few times I'd probably just um, make a tool for that or you know some sort of small punch but anyway I couldn't really find one um, and that was quite cheap so that's what I used um, also this was quite a cheap screwdriver but you know it's reasonably good quality so after I tapped most of it because this uh, sort of makes like a a lot of waves and it's it tends to want to try and punch through that helps sort of like just get the rest of it out of the road but in any case we got it loose and it came out as sort of one piece like this now this was just glued on there so it just took a little bit of a a pry with a screwdriver in there just to get it off so I'd say it's also stuck to this and this is uh, you know it's gone very hard and whatever over time now, as you can see, I had a problem with this when I tried to access the adjustment screw there, and that it's it's gone so hard is that normally it's supposed to sort of be flexible enough that you can get your screwdriver in between. There's like a slot cut in there, but it's just gone so hard and brittle that it just flakes off, as you can see there. So, the next thing that we want to do is we want to get in under this board here. So we need to desolder this uh, two posts here and that's basically your positive and negative connections that are actually attached to this motor. There's one capacitor there and I suspect there'll be at least one more. There's one more there. I can't see if there's a, a third. In the other one there were three. Uh, this one looks like maybe there's just two. I can't see what value they are at this point. I'll have a quick look. So 3.3 and 10 uh, microfarad. Um, luckily I have those and I have those in I think a similar size to that so I don't think I'm going to have any dramas with this one. Um, I might also have some sort of micro uh, capacitors like they're very very small form factor. Uh, they're still through hole they're not SMD so I might even use those if, if I've got those for that. So anyway we'll replace those and we'll have a look and just um, like I said, get the motor off, and once we've got the motor off, then we can actually look at uh, taking it apart, cleaning the inside of it, and greasing it. 
by hand this feels quite smooth and doesn't seem to be binding or anything like that but uh, you know 40 odd years old we might as well grease it while we're, we're here because uh, you know who's going to come and pull this apart again I certainly won't be doing it um, so I'd like to get this done uh, get everything done that I can while it's apart so two capacitors and we'll pull the rest of this motor apart Okay, just looking at this with the Pioneer this basically did come off as one piece but left a lot of residue but this one is really quite bad so it's left a lot of residue on here which I can scrape away with this sort of plastic uh, scraping tool some sort of I think it's a huck or something or other anyway it's uh, quite good for this and it's just cleaning up all of this stuff and then I'll probably use a bit of um, alcohol or something just to clean the rest of it up So of course I'll have to replace this with something and my thoughts are so maybe a bit of, I've got a bit of cork, I could probably get a bit of uh, rubber or something else like that. Um, we just want to make sure that it's nothing that's going to be sort of interfere with getting access to the uh, trim pot there. And also something that's going to remain electri electrically neutral, uh, not absorb too much moisture or do any damage to this board. And again, you don't want anything that's sort of maybe going to be acidic or turn acidic over time. So anyway, this is making a nice little mess here. So, but I think that's probably about as clean as uh, I'm going to get it with the scraper. Maybe a few little bits there. Let's see where we go. Yep, they come off. Then I think now we'll just use a bit of alcohol or something just to clean the rest of that gunk off. Okay, here it is all nice and clean. Uh, I used a bit of uh, alcohol and actually a bronze brush and that seemed to help you know, get rid of all that junk. So I was going to try and keep some of those bits of uh, the old rubber foam just as sort of a reference point for you know how thick it should be but the stuff just crumbles so badly and as you can see I've had to take the mat away and actually give it a wash because it's just so bad. So the next thing I need to do is we need to desolder this post and this post here. And as mentioned, I've already taken my macro shot, so I know exactly where this is all meant to go. And then I'll do the same actually when I flip it over, just so that I know exactly where things are meant to be sitting. So as you can see, there's actually not a, a huge amount to this, but I do think it's, you know, it's, it's so hidden away and it's so actually inaccessible and it's not really, I suppose, a normally serviceable part. So I suspect not many people have actually been this far in to a motor and, you know, looked at it. And I certainly um, haven't seen too many videos. Or actually, I don't think I've seen any videos of anyone actually getting in there. So I was a bit hesitant to do this at first on the Pioneer, but basically I felt, uh, you know, I sort of had a, at a point where I had really no option. So this is now my second one. I think it's gone a little bit, uh, well, so far it's gone better than the first one. So we'll uh, see if we can uh, get this working. Okay, let's desolder those posts and see what we can do. Ah, I need a different size part. So it was a little hard to do um, working around the camera. So I managed to get it out and I've just put a little plus sign here. It matches the plus sign there just so that I know which terminal goes where. Um, and that'll just make it, you know, simple for me to put it back together. So that's this stage. So the next thing I'll do, well, it's actually not much to this at all. So what we'll do is we'll um, desolder these and put some new ones in. And just check all the joints, everything else. I think, you know, they all look fine to me. Um, it's certainly not bright solder anymore, but that's, I think, because of that blackness from that rubber foam that was on there. So anyway, we'll uh, take those out and see what happens next.
Okay, I'll just show the replacements that I've got here. So this is a 3.3 and this is a 10. So for the 3.3, I've got basically the same size, but for the 10, 16, 16 volt, 10 UF, I've got a very small form factor one. Now I don't really need to use the small form factor, obviously, because I mean, they've used like a, that sort of size. Um, I'm actually a little bit short on those. So I, I actually bought this thinking that this is a sort that would be needed for in here. So I'm just gonna use it. Okay, that's both of those capacitors in place now so what I'll do now is I'll solder that up and then I'll give the board a bit of a clean with a bit of uh, you know contact spray all right here they are soldered in place <laughs> 